Yo, Adam Saxton here with Guy in a Cube, and today we are gonna learn six ways that you can perform an app registration for your Power BI applications or using the REST API. It's coming up. Real quick, if you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with videos from both Patrick and myself. As with most things I talk about, this is coming up because I get a ton of questions on this. What do we need to create an app registration successfully when using Power BI? So part of the problem is, is that when we go to create the app registration, you may see errors similar to the following. These may be similar to errors such as, hey, I don't have a client secret or I need the client secret, what's going on? And typically that's a result of, we created that app registration using the wrong settings. So what's an app registration? We need to create an app registration inside of Azure Active Directory if we want to use things like using the REST APIs. This app registration basically gives us permissions to use the REST API. This can be used when embedding content, so for like Power BI Embedded, or it could be used for other things, like if I wanna use PowerShell scripts for DevOps type operations, they all require that I create an app registration so that these can be used successfully. All right, we're gonna head over to dev.powerbi.com slash apps. And after we give our app a name, the first thing that we're gonna do is select our application type. So this is either gonna be web app or native. Now for most cases, your gut reaction is gonna be correct. So if you're creating a web application, use a web app. If you're creating like a console based application or you're doing something with PowerShell, something of that nature, then you're gonna to wanna to choose native app. There is an exception to this rule and this is where I get a lot of the questions on because people will choose the wrong one when they thought that the other applied and it causes errors. The best example I can give on this is Power BI Embedded. So if I'm creating a Power BI Embedded application, so this is like the ISV type approach, I'm going to be using that master account within the application itself. It's not exposed to the UI layer then I need to choose native application. This goes against everything your gut is telling you because you're probably creating a web application if you're doing a Power BI embedded app. And it's a web application, so I should choose web app. No, I should choose native app. The reason that you wanna choose a native app is because of the grant permission step, which we're gonna talk about later. That's the last step that we've gotta do. But that's the reason why you wanna choose native app because only the native app can do the grant permission step. I can't do that with a web app. So like I said, we'll come back to that when we're done. All right, the second step we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and enter a redirect URL. So the redirect URL is typically gonna be the return address of your web application. So typically you'll have a redirect page or something of that nature, which will handle the auth token coming back from Azure Active Directory. If you have an application that doesn't really have a redirect page, so for example, PowerShell, then you can use what's referred to as, a, as an out of band request. And so you're gonna like copy and paste it. I'll have it listed here below and I'll have it down in the descriptions. You can just copy and paste that into the redirect URL and that will be fine. Step number three is we are going to select the permissions for our application. So we have a limited list down in the dev.powerbi.com slash apps page. So you can select the ones that apply to what your application is gonna be doing. And we will come back to permissions once we get over to the Azure portal, but this is your first step to apply permissions. So go ahead and select those. Step number four is we're gonna hit submit and it's going to create that app registration for us inside of Azure Active Directory. Once we have that, we're gonna get back some information. Either one, if we chose a web app, we're gonna get back a client ID and a client secret. We wanna copy both of these. It's very important that you not lose this. If you chose a native app, we're just gonna get a client ID. There will be no secret, just a client ID. And that's everything we need to do on the dev.powerbi.com slash apps page. But we still got two more steps that we need to do if we are using a Power BI embedded application. So if you're just using a regular web application, you might be good to go assuming that the permissions listed were all that you need. There are a total of around, at the time of this recording, a total of around 14 permissions that are available from the API standpoint for Power BI. And we only have about six of those accounted for in the web page. We're working on getting that updated, so stay tuned on that. But for right now, there's only six on the main app registration page for Power BI. The rest are located inside of the Azure AD portal. So what we can do is go ahead and head over to portal.azure.com, go to Azure Active Directory, inside of there, select app registrations. And in there, we're gonna select the app that we wanna edit, and we're gonna look at the API permissions for those. 
With inside of API permissions, you should see Power BI listed as one of those. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and select that and make sure that you check all of the permissions that are required by your application. You don't have to select all of them if you don't need them. Usually a less, usually a more restrictive selection is better, but you'll need to know exactly what your application's doing. If you're just creating like a proof of concept or a demo of some kind, you can just select all of them and make sure that that works. But again, I would err on be as restrictive as you can in this case. One thing to note also is if you're not a global admin, make sure that you select each individual selection outside of the ones that are already marked as yes. Otherwise you could end up hitting an error. But once you've selected all the permissions that you need, go ahead and hit save. And this brings us to the final step that we have, which is grant permission. The grant permission step is for native applications where you don't have user interaction. So this would be like, hey, if I'm hard coding a given account that's authenticating to Azure AD, in this case, a Power BI embedded app, my master account, they don't have UI interaction. So, so typically when you log into an application for the first time, you're gonna get prompted with that request to accept those permissions for on your account. So you'll get prompted, hey, these are the permissions this app's using, is that okay? You'll hit accept everything will be great, it's a one-time request. In the case of a Power BI embedded application, there is no UI layer, so there's nothing to present you to say accept. So we have to do that beforehand. That's what grant permission does, and I can only do that grant permission step on a native application, which is why we chose native for Power BI embedded, even though it could be a web application. And two things to know about grant permissions, if you are a global admin account and you hit grant permissions, this will be applied to all users with inside of your tenant. So be aware of that. If you are not a global admin user, then when you hit grant permission, it will only be applied to your account. So you'll wanna make sure you're signed into the Azure portal with the account that you really wanna apply these permissions to. So if you're using a master account for Power BI Embedded, make sure you're signed into that master account. Otherwise, if you do it with your account and that's not the master account, you didn't really apply the permissions and you'll end up with errors. Now that your application is registered, your permissions are set up, you can go ahead and use that client ID or client ID in secret with your application and start using those Power BI REST APIs. All right, what questions do you guys have? I know I've gotten hit up a lot on the app registrations. I'm gonna be doing more videos on Power BI Embedded as well down the line from a developer perspective, so stay tuned on that. But I'd love to hear your questions regarding app registrations. Go and leave those down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video. Which one's Patrick? I don't know. Yeah, I do. I'm the one with the camera. He never carries the camera.